Welcome to the first share out of this book dash, November 2022. Uh, we've had over 22 people working with us throughout the week. Uh, we had 14 contribution session. We had three social and one public event. And before that, we had training on GitHub as well as onboarding sessions. Mm -hmm. So it has been longer than a week. Uh, lots of work has gone behind it. And we had a fantastic Book Dash committee who, who were responsible for all of these. So thank you so, so much. And Lee Steele, Emma Karun, Esther Plum, Lena Karbovskaya, and Ariel Bennett. Ariel is not here right now, but she will join us. She is sending her uh, love. She said that she's, she's sad to be missing this part. I think uh, we will try to keep the front loaded agenda quite short so you, we would have chance to go and hear from what each of you have been doing in the book dash, but very kindly Anne has been coordinating with our communities working groups, they have some emergent working groups who are uh, being represented here today, and I will actually hand it over directly to. Actually Anne. Uh, would you like to go ahead and introduce what the working groups are and what the governance of working groups are? Yeah, of course. So to make it easier to understand what in the world do we mean by working groups, you might have heard the term kind of tossed around in different spaces at different times over the course of the past couple of months. I'm going to share maybe three slides, but then I'm going to pass it down to folks that are actually doing um, and developing the working groups. Um, and this is really just to have as much visibility as possible into all these different parts of the project, because increasingly the Turing Way is really a community of communities um, and a lot of different things are happening in different directions that are very, very exciting. So with that, I'm going to share my screen here. Cool. So this will just be a couple of small updates. We'll start with the working groups and then we'll do, um, we have a couple of just like more general updates about what's been going on within the Turing Way before we head into the share outs later on. So just a, a little bit of a background here. Um, over the course of the past um, uh, eight months, but really extending back years at this point, um, we've really been um, trying to understand, you know, how can we uh, document, um, document processes, communities, um, process like different parts of the Turing way and really make a lot of the informal work that's been going on really across, um, across the project um, more official or, or um, more official or more, um, I think I, I would say maybe more explicit um, given that of course, as we all know, without within the world of open source, uh, there's so much work that goes into um, making projects sustainable and enabling their continuity into the future. And within the Turing Way, um, we've seen a couple of different uh, themes and tasks and ways of working emerging um, amidst all of the other projects going on within the Turing Way. So I'm, this is a kind of a graph of how we're starting to visualize, you know, what does governance look like? How do we organize within ourselves? What type of tasks are happening on a regular basis? Um, who's collaborating with us? Um, where do people collaborate? What do they work on? Um, and how can we make that more explicit so that other folks can join in as well? So the working groups um, and emergent teams are really kind of uh, with the aim of doing sort of three things. One is that on the Alan Turing Institute side, um, as you may know, we have uh, folks and staff members at the Turing who have some of their time bookmarked to work on the Turing way. And we've been wondering, you know, how can we um, operationalize or uh, make that time um, more explicit for folks, make it easier to get involved with the Turing Way project. It is, as it is such a massive community and a massive um, body of work. Um, on the other hand, there have been some really amazing efforts that have emerged over the course of the past number of years. For example, the translation and localization team, and most recently, um, infrastructure maintenance work. And we've been wondering, you know, how can we officially, um, you know, recognize uh, that kind of emergent work within the project as well, as well as some you know, upcoming work that's happening on accessibility and reviewing communications and that sort of thing. And so it's kind of within all of these sort of four themes that are emerging um, that we're trialing the process of developing working groups um, throughout the project, um, just to see how people communicate, what do they use in order to make their process as open as possible, um, with eventually the goal of opening them up to the wider community. Um, but for now, it's all a big experiment. And so with that, 
I'm going to stop talking here and stop sharing my screen and pass it on to a couple of folks who will be talking about various aspects of the working groups and projects from localization, infrastructure, reviewers and editors, mentors and trainers, um, and uh, let them tell you a little bit more about what they've been up to. It's really just meant to be informal, but just meant to kind of share across different parts of the project. So to get us started, maybe Batul, if I could pass it on to you. Okay, thank you so much, Ann. Uh, so I'm gonna start and share a screen. Hopefully that's gonna work. Uh, I'm gonna just switch off my camera just in case to save bandwidth. So all of these slides that I'm gonna go through it, I'm gonna go through very, very quickly. And inside the slides, I'm also gonna explain uh, pretty much what we've been doing in terms of governance in this uh, book dash. Um, okay, so I'm very, very thankful for Andrea for making all these slides. Uh, so why do we do translation localization? Uh, it's a way of democratization knowledge, access for non-native speakers uh, that gives them this access to this kind of knowledge um, and content of the Turing way. It's also an entry point to the community itself, especially for individuals who are not used to use GitHub. Uh, it's also a way of community building instead of isolating effort, collaborative translation can have more continuity and also opportunity to learn from one another. So since tra translation is really a way to read and study the content of the guide, it can feed back to the content of the main guide in English as well. So the team right now, the, there's few people also in crowding that uh, I don't have images for them and they are not been within the co-working session. That's why you don't see them here, but uh, we have quite volunteers. Um, but we still don't have some sort of process for onboarding and offboarding. And that's something that I'm gonna go through it just uh, in a few minutes. So there was a previous effort in Spanish and Japanese inspired by the carbon documentation. So the carbon have similar effort in terms of localization. Uh, also, before we started this work, uh, the Spanish community did have some sort of work flow that they were meeting actually every week and they were doing translation for the Turing way. Uh, that has some sort of um, uh, problems or some sort of limitations, things that we try to, to fix. Uh, uh, because we have demand for more languages, we want to keep up with the original content, we want support for writing of languages, and we also want to explore options with machine learning and translation memory. So in November 2021, we had uh, we formed some sort of a group to do the infrastructure for a new, a new, a new infrastructure for localization and translation. And then we had a weekly meeting afterward on each Tuesday. So we have some sort of automated translation and a proofreading workflow. Uh, we have drafts with translation chapter and a BR in the community guide that I'm going to speak about in a bit. Uh, we have translation guidelines in each language, and it's written by the language itself as well. Um, we have discussion about the governance, about the onboarding, and this is what we focus on in this book dash. Uh, and we also, um, like a few of our members, did participate in conference meeting, uh, speaking about the localization translation. So I'm very thankful for Camilla and Andrea. They spoke in the Carbonary Con. Uh, Melissa and uh, Asma spoke at Write the Doc. And both of their slides also available in Zenado for the Turing Way. Uh, so in this book dash, what we focused on, we focused in the onboarding and offboarding guidelines. Um, so there's a link here. I'm not going to go a lot about it, but we're trying to make the process, although we do describe it in details within the chapter itself, like how you can join, but we want to make it more and more easier and like document it in a very brief way, but at the same time, it's something that it doesn't feel overwhelming and feels smooth. And there was a lot of discussion about this, especially with Bamilla, uh, like what kind of path or rules we, like some people might be able to do things that does not relate for translation itself. So they don't need to speak um, a language other than English. So you can, they can actually work in the documentation, the infrastructure, they can reuse that work of law translation memory in their own open source project. And uh, yeah, so there is a variety of roles that they can take on. And we try to summarize some sort of um, 
like steps and tick boxes for some of the mandatory and some like optional. Uh, we also uh, try to uh, summarize some sort of stuff for anyone who like went off board a uh, checklist from the localization team. Uh, so we're trying to make some sort of structure. We need feedbacks. Um, uh, so if you have any sort of feedback, please do join us in any of the uh, co-working session in each Tuesday. Um, yeah, so uh, as I said, we're trying to make that process as easy, as smooth as possible. We see, we see some people struggling sometime when they join the translation. Uh, uh, we're trying also to do some sort of milestones for the translation. And Melissa has been working about the milestones, um, which you can set it up inside the crowd itself. Maybe she's going to be showing you that in the next book, Dad, so I don't want to take that from her. Um, so. Um, as I said, we, 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 we have documentation for a few languages, but some of the languages still don't have documentation for them. We need that. Uh, and the lodgement for a translator and team lead, we need to work on that. Uh, the multi-language side deploy, so we have deployment, but still it's not integrated in the, in the book itself. And we need to discuss that with, with the infrastructure um, group. Uh, and there's something that being suggested by uh, Andrea and by Melissa, which is translation dash to assess and discuss and promote the progress of the translation. We have uh, also a few events coming in. Uh, this token riots club that uh, Anne will be given, I'll be helping her with. And there's a workshop also uh, about, uh, in a symposium for the Interstein Foundation about the localization in the 1st of December. So please feel free to drop by. Uh, yeah, and that's pretty much everything. I'm sorry if I spoke too much. Thank you so much, Vasco. That was so great. I definitely learned a lot about what you all have been up to over the course of Book Dash here as well. That's amazing. Um, really love the work that you're doing. I think with that, maybe the next person that I'll pass it to will be Jim. Uh, yeah, hello. Um, yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm Jim Madge. I'm a senior research software engineer at the Anchor Institute. I am now a member of the brand new uh, infrastructure <laughs> working group. Um, so I knew that the first meeting, I think, was was the end of last week, um, sort of setting out who we are and, and, and what we're going to do. Um, so, yeah, so as, as a group, we're, we're looking after infrastructure which is a bit of an overloaded term, but when we're thinking about the Turing way, uh, that means a lot of automated processes. It means the build process, the building the book, publishing the book online. It means uh, CI, so the continuous integration check, the make sure that you've got a decent uh, code quality and, and bug free as, as best we can. Um, so that's the sort of, something we're taking ownership and, and, and looking at improving and i think that the genesis of this working group um is the need was felt to to uh formalize uh this aspect so in a, in a mature project the infrastructure becomes the critically important and and without uh, a good handle on that things might stop working which again for the turing way might mean the book fails to build or fails to deploy and, and that would be a big problem because it would uh, create barriers and friction for people contributing to the book um, and it might introduce problems with accessibility if, if we're requiring people to have a sort of high technical knowledge uh, to get started contributing. Um, so that, so that's um, of oh, the need for this but at the same time of course we're committed to openness and want to put a community and, and keep things accessible. So doc, we feel documentation is gonna be critical to this. We need to work openly, all of our sort of processes need to be explained and, and um, interrogatable, visible to everyone. And, and we need to make sure that people can get their feedback and, and contribute to that. So that's sort of the first task I think we, we've agreed on is we need to document all the existing processes and maybe write a bit about where we want them to go um, so we can demystify all of that. Um, and I think a, another important point of that is that once you have that sort of documentation, it's only much easier for someone to contribute to the infrastructure aspect of the project um, or to onboard someone to become a new member of the, 
of the infrastructure working group if they wanted to, because without that, it would involve a lot of digging through YAML files and shell scripts and things to try and figure out how all these moving parts work. Um, um, yeah, so I think I think that's a brief overview of of what we're doing, and and it's early days, but I'm we're already we're starting to have ideas about what we're going to do and, and make contributions. So I'm quite excited about where it's going to go, and I I think at this point I should uh, give thanks to Anne for bringing the members of the working group together and and pushing for this because that was that was sort of all her idea and driving force and sort of corralling us together and and making sure. Uh, we uh, shared our ideas and, and have a plan for going forward. Um, yeah, so thanks, everyone. Um, thanks so much, Jim. And I will say that T minus one week, two weeks after the first meeting, I'm seeing the phrase infrastructure team in a pull request, which is a sign that was waiting to happen. But now it's here and being used already, which is insane and really cool. Um, cool. So the next. Um, Person I'll be passing off to is Hari to tell us a little bit more about the reviewers and editors working group. Well, thanks, Anne. Hi, everyone. My name is Hari. Like when you go somewhere quickly, you're in a hurry. I am a research application manager here at the Training Institute, I'm a call team member, and also part of the reviewers and editors working group. Um, so, similar to Jim, this has been set up recently. It's comprised of myself, Esther, um, Vicky, who's not here, and Jen. I think also finishing up here. Um, and our sort of task is to make, well, I can't the name, reviewers and editors trying to make um, contributions to the Turing way a bit easier and um, think about um, any chapters that are being created, how we can facilitate that process, how we can make it clearer, like what gaps there are, how people can contribute, all that kind of thing, um, and engage with creation as easily as possible in the book. And we've been going for potentially a bit longer um, than one or two weeks. I'm just going to share. So I've if you're interested, we've got this Slack channel in the Turingway Slack. I just, I copied it. I didn't have anywhere to paste it, so I put it straight in the chat, early doors there. Um, we also have a discussion thread here on the um, on the Turingway repo, where you can keep up to date with what we're doing. But in essence, what we've been looking at is thinking, okay, how can we make it as easy as possible for people to contribute and sort of know where to start and sort of get, get additions made to the book? And long story short, what we've realized is that there's a ton of open issues and a ton of open pull requests, some of which are very live and some of which aren't. And so if you're first coming to the project, it can be a little bit difficult to know where to start. And if you see something that you might want to contribute to, knowing whether people are still working on it, whether this resource is still going on it, all that kind of thing. And so one thing we've been thinking about doing and working on is trying to sort of clean up the issues and pull requests um, and contribution pathways to the project. So that when people come to it um, straight away, it's very clean. Anything you find, say, in open issues is something that's like really actively being talked about and discussed and all that kind of thing. And so we, we, we dreamed initially of, OK, if we just split going through all this stuff together, so split all the open issues into four and all the open pull requests into four between us, we'll be able to, within a couple of hours, just go through it and clean it up. That was obviously a bit of a dream. We've learned that now. And it's a little bit more complicated than that. Um, just because, so there's issues sort of dating all the way back to 2018 that are open. Some of them are still kind of still being actioned, but at a very sort of irregular cadence. Um, others are kind of issues that should stay open just for reference anyway, even if they're not necessarily being worked upon. Um, others still aren't as simple as, oh, we're trying to get this one particular task done. And so we can either tick it off as done or not. They're sort of ongoing discussions that's been more complex. So we're going through a review process, basically a review process of reviewing and trying to figure out what's the best way to manage issues and pull requests that are open in the repo. I <laughs> kind of want to show you guys what we're working on, but it's a little bit of a mess because also if anyone's interested in seeing it. Definitely share it. Love to see it. <laughs> sure. Um, so we have got, uh, I, I guess spent probably like an hour talking through how this works, but where goes too much detail. So we've got just a Google Drive that we started of um, issues and pull requests to review. Um, and basically <laughs> what it looks like is this, which is just, so we, we started with a, um, we're going for is it lean methodology. We're starting small and taking a subset of the work that we want to do, trying it and seeing if we can iterate on the process to improve it before we go wider. And so what we found is um, 
a bunch of issues that were opened in 2019 and the last action in 2019, so last commented on or last pull request or anything was done um, in 2019 for them. And looking at them and saying, okay, what do we think this issue should, should continue to be live and still being discussed? So we had a bunch of different thought in it. The idea is like green is like, we should probably close it because, um, so yeah, our sort of like KPI is, can we clean up um, issues, which can be a little bit confusing. So green is good, but that means that we can close the issues. It's no longer being action. Amber is like, oh, we're not sure whether it should be closed or not. And red is, this is still definitely live or still definitely um, being discussed or that kind of thing. So we shouldn't close it. And we went through this review process of, oh, if we get like um, three people to admit that something can be closed, then we can or admit. If we get three people to say that something can be closed, then they can be closed. If not, we should have a discussion about it. We then also realized that some issues can just straight away be closed because I think they were maybe thoughts from the previous book dash, which is like a question and nothing else has been action since then, that was three years ago. So we introduced C for can be closed immediately. Then we also introduced B for this already exists in the book. And so what you may be thinking is this is all getting a little bit confusing. And one thing we realized is potentially we were overthinking this a little bit and, and trying to categorize down um, too much. So as you can see, we've, we've made a bunch of progress. The, the sort of tricky thing is this has been four of us working asynchronously over a few weeks when we've had time and we haven't even got through the 2019 issues yet, let alone looking at 2018, 2020, 2021. And again, our aim is to get to the stage where the only issues that are open from the entire history of the project are the ones that are still being actioned. So we do need to have a bit of a review on this process is, is maybe ideally the best way to go about it and it's very sort of consensus driven and all that kind of thing but it's quite slow and a little bit confusing and maybe not of, sort of the most benefit to the community in order to get to where we want to go so we're yeah we need to go through a review, review process how we're doing it i think we're going to try and stream out a bit more to say unless there's definitely a really active discussion being ha being had on the repo or in pull requests on issues we'll just close them for now because they can also always be reopened um, and then I think once we get there and have a clean set of things that work upon, we can work more towards, okay, what's the um, methods and the pipeline for creating content and engaging? But that's a to go. Thanks so much, Harry. Um, it'll be really interesting to see what happens next uh, for the group too, because it sounds like you've gone through a couple different versions of that reviewing process. Um, and since we have folks here like Patricia that were part of those 2019 um, issues and pull requests, I'd be really curious what she thinks of this review a couple of years down the road too. Yeah, um, also a couple of final thoughts. If you do want to get involved, please just, we have that Slack channel, but also just like message one of us. There's myself, Esther is on the call, um, Jennifer Ding and Vicky Helen. And also seconding Jim's point of thank you so much, Anne, for putting all the stuff together. Um, it's really like crystallizing the kind of stuff that needs to go on with the community, with the repo, um, and clarifying like where the focus areas of work is. So I appreciate all the hard work we've done putting this together. Thanks very much. Um, I think with that, the last uh, person that we'll be passing on to is the mentors and trainers group, um, which I'm gonna pass on to Alden to tell us a little bit more about what you've been up to. Hi. Uh, yeah, so the mentors and trainers group, um, it's funny that uh, Anne and I were talking about this yesterday. It's kind of funny that we're calling it mentors and trainers because we haven't really gotten to that part of the work yet. But what we've been doing is working on a, um, here, let me show you the project board if I can find the right one here. Um, basically, we have created um, a set of tasks for ourselves and we're working Right now, just through these basic, let's see, here we go, through these set of tasks in order to make a really clear and easy to find um, set of templates for talks and also a good record of the existing talks. So this was kind of our, our first goal was to go through what was already on the GitHub, which was a little um, scattered and maybe not always consistent and make sure that each talk that's been given about the Turing way has um, a record and ideally an open source um, way to get the slides, download them yourself, edit them if you want. So we basically wanted to check um, 
so this archiving conference papers issue, for instance. So we, we looked through, there were 15 that were on the Turingway GitHub. And we wanted to make sure they were all on Zenodo, that they were all in both PDF and um, some kind of editable slide format. And so we just split that up. And that was actually pretty easy because most people have put them online. And so we um, went through those and just made sure that they were all available. And then the, the task uh, ballooned from there because we found, you know, Anne basically gave us the, the nugget of information that all the talks are recorded in the newsletter. And turns out the 15 that were on GitHub are just a teeny tiny slice of um, what's in the newsletter. So we have gone through the newsletter and pulled out, well, this is looking, oh, this is the original 15, so that's nice and manageable, but this is the list um, of, whoop, went too fast. 122 or 120, no, yeah, 121 um, from the newsletter. So as you can see, we're making our way through this. We're taking what is, you know, just a text block in the newsletter. So so-and-so and so-and-so presented and not necessarily with a link, although most of them do have a link um, and pulling out the relevant information. So date and talk info and the link and everything and their ORCID if they have it. And then the next step will be to contact anyone um, who didn't include all the information. And then we're gonna try to have a really um, solid database of these talks. And then to go along with that, it's a very, it's a very multi-pronged approach. Let me move my video of you all. Um, we did a new issue. So if you go a new issue template. So now if you want to give a talk and you go into the Turingway GitHub, and this is important. I hope everybody um, uses this if they if they need to. So if you want to start an issue, new issue, and please go to uh, give a Turing White Talk. Get started, and then you'll find that it has a lot of information in here. So your date, um, details, and then we gave you a whole checklist. So we link to the Slack, you know, hopefully anyone who's giving a talk is probably in Slack already, but just in case. Um, we've linked to the promotion pack. So that's in Google Drive where we have um, three templates. So there's a general one with some case studies and one that goes into a little more detail about the book. And those are all editable. So download and, um, and you know, edit as you see fit. And then we encourage you to create a DOI as soon as possible because we'd rather have it have a DOI before you give the presentation because then you can include the DOI on the slides and you can of course um, version that and check it. And um, going back to the promotion pack, this is part of the other work we're doing too, um, collecting all the old talks. So ideally we should also have copies in here or um, at least you can just see the, the spreadsheet, which we should put in here now I'm realizing um, so that you can find, you know, if you don't, these templates are, are pretty um, generic. And, but if you had someone, if you find that someone talked on a specific topic that relates to what you're going to talk about, you can find their exact presentation, download that, have their slides. And then of course the checklist has, you know, reminders about um, giving credit to everybody and all the, all the links you want to include for the Turing way and socials and stuff like that. So, so yeah, I think that's most of it. I don't know if Emma wants to add anything um, about what we've been doing. And then, um, and then the future work is, is going to be more along the lines of, of training and mentoring. So we want to develop some onboarding documents and also related to the presentations, make sure that the, the workshops that often many Turing White people have given are kind of standardized and also we have templates for those. So, yeah. Um, awesome. And it, I wonder if maybe we can bring in um, some of the folks from the translation and localization team if they have base slide decks that they're using and, and talks that they're giving too, so we can add that into the main area. Um, if you want to link that spreadsheet as well here, I'll be really cool to explore. That's an amazing number of talks uh, that we've given over the course of the past couple of years. Yeah, I can put that in here. It's it's definitely a work in progress, but um, yeah. Awesome. Cool. So really, the last, I know we're, we're zooming through time here, um, 
but really just wanted to use the last maybe two, three minutes to zoom through just some small other updates that have come across all different parts of the project over the course of the past six months. Um, thank you so much um, to Batul, to Jim, to Hari, to Alden for sharing a bit more about the working groups. I'm gonna start, share my slide or share my screen one more time um, just to share a couple of other highlights there. If my screen sharing works. Um, one other thing that we just like to flag is that um, over the course of the uh, past, a little bit more than a year now, or around a year, um, we just completed our 2021-2022 first fireside chat season, um, which had over nine partners, over 50 people participating and uh, co-organizing, um, over 40, sorry. Um, as well as almost just, just the same number of organizations involved. Um, massive, massive shout outs to, to everyone who um, participated, joined, co-organized, um, and were there. It was really a really interesting series, um, everything from um, more about the history of the Turing Way project to translation and localization to open hardware, open science, um, and uh, citizen science, all sorts of different topics really that addressed all different aspects of um, the open science and broader open ecosystem. We're excited to, to do it all again in 2023, maybe with a couple of different changes, different couple of different ideas for uh, events. And if you're interested in co-organizing, being involved in any of them, reach out to me or to Malvika or to anyone from the core team. Just a couple of other things to flag. Um, I'll have to double check this with uh, the spreadsheet, but it seemed like we gave over around 34 talks, workshops, keynotes, presentations since the last Book Dash. Um, and there were over 50 in 2022 alone. Um, we did trial three new kind of workshops and, and hackathon style events over the course of the past six, eight months. Um, we've had a zero to 200 GitHub workshops that's been trialed in a couple of different places now. Um, everything from starting to use GitHub for the first time to making a contribution to the Turing Way in two hours. Um, and really happy to say that Winnie, who has been with us um, for her first book dash, was an initial participant of uh, the first version of this workshop, which was at CarpentryCon 2022. Um, really exciting to see her go from using GitHub for the first time to contributing to the Turing Way over the course of the past three months. Um, we also trialed a research infrastructure roles hackathon most recently at um, Big Team Science, which kind of experimented with the process of having discussion groups related to research infrastructure roles, writing case studies about those roles, and seeing where we could um, create chapters in real time. Um, and we've also had a couple of different introductions to the Fediverse, to Mastodon, to broader kind of open science, open source principles. Um, and ways of working in a couple of different collaboration cafes. So really exciting stuff, um, different things emerging across the project, but just wanna give a huge number of shout outs to people whose names I will probably forget and try to remember everyone that was involved in this from Hari to um, Irini, um, Ariel, Emma, Esther, Sophia, and Danny Garside. Um, number of people that I'm forgetting here, um, but also want to flag a huge, huge massive thank you to Lena, who co-organized co a experimental data conversations event at this book dash, um, as well as to um, Andrea and to Liz, who co-organized a accessibility workshop, which was the first of its kind um, that we posted within the Turing Way, and we hope to do a lot more at future um, book dashes and throughout the year as well. Other than that, just flagging a, a number of different chapters that have emerged over the course of the past uh, six, eight months. Big, big shout outs from across the community. Um, but this is all updates pre book dash, everything from um, updates to the research infrastructure roles, chapters to personal stories and case studies, um, new chapters related to machine learning model licenses, ethical considerations for open source governance, um, updates to peer review chapters, data papers, um, sensitive data all sorts of different things. So massive shout outs to authors, writers, reviewers of all those chapters. And I think with that, um, we're back here at Book Dash and I'm gonna pass the mic 
for us to be able to do some um, share outs for what folks have been up to over the course of this past week. All right, stop sharing my screen here and I'll pass it on to Malvika who will pass it on to other folks to share what they've been up to. Thank you. That's like, that's really impressive. I had heard a lot about all these work, but like looking about all of them in one slide just really blew my mind. Thank you all very, very much. And thanks Anne for being the, the best storyteller of our community. Thank you so much, everyone. I am just still digesting. And I think we could actually at this point take five minutes break and come back, grab a glass of water if you need to stretch, please do. And uh, we'll get started after five minutes. So let's come back. It's 17.20 in my clock, 19 in my clock. Let's come back at 17.25, wherever you are, please add five more minutes. I'm gonna pause our recording. Turn the recording back on. Um, yeah, so this is the segment where we will see all the things that you're doing. I'm really hoping that someone will merge their pull request on the call on the demo because those are the best thing ever. Um, with that, um, I want to actually share the cuckoo clock because I would like to make sure that each of you get the get, get about the same time to speak. We will take question all at the end. So we'll do the demo for everybody and then take question at the end so I don't rush anybody. With that, we have our first set of speakers, Rachel and Mavish. Hey, hi. Yeah, hi everyone. Thanks. This is the first time um, that I've been to a book dash um, and also contributing to the Turing Way. So that's great. Yeah, I'm going to kind of um, give a summary for Mawish and myself, but Mawish obviously just chip in if I forget something or just say something at the end if, <laughs> if you want as well. But we thought this would be simpler. Um, all right, I'll share my screen. I'm afraid it won't be too visually interesting and I'm not sure we can do a live <laughs> live for a merge but you know um okay so hopefully that looks clear uh what we were working on um during uh this week was we were interested in contributing to this research infrastructure role page and that's because um we recently started as data wranglers at the Alan Turing Institute and so we noticed that there was this really great um uh, section on different roles uh, but data wranglers wasn't in here so that was really our main purpose to kind of add uh, this role to this section um, so we did make a start and uh, people can see the the progress we've made with this hackmd link here i think we're not quite at the ready uh, to merge it yet because we just want to get some feedback from um, our kind of core team uh, that we work with just kind of outside of this book dash as well but as you can see we are we are quite close we've got an overview we've got a summary of what we do we have uh, what qualifications or skills you need, some challenges for data wranglers, some benefits of having data wranglers, and then there's some stuff at the bottom that we're kind of uh, just finalizing. So it's very close. Um, and then I guess the last thing I'll mention is that we also had some great discussions with uh, a few people at this book dash about job roles in general, so kind of Esther and Ariel and a few others. And I think after we've kind of got this subchapter merged, I think it would be really great to think about like a page on um, comparing and contrasting these roles. And I have a few ideas about that, but I'll, I'll leave it there for now. Oh, and finally, we did get our the um, Scriberia artist. Um, uh, yeah, we got a role of the data wrangler, so I'm really excited to, to see that as well. Thank you so much. Uh, Mavish, anything you want to add before? Um, I, yeah, no, I just want to say thank you to everyone for organizing this book dash. It's been a really great experience. So lovely talking to everyone writing in this uh, Data Wrangler chapter. It's, I think, both me and Rachel's first time writing in to or contributing to open source. So, yeah, it's been a great experience. And it's actually thought a week would be long, but um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, I'll just really add, briefly add as well. I felt very welcomed and so thank you. It's been a really nice community to be a part of. So exactly. So nice. Amazing. Thank you. You all were perfectly on time. And also, I'm really excited about this compare and contrast table. That would be really, really fantastic. I think one of the hopes that um, 
the initial authors had that people will actually learn uh, what other roles exist and, and actually identify with the skills that they have. So that table would be fantastic. Thank you all. Uh, can we have just some virtual round of applause, some beautiful emojis come to just celebrate what we heard. And that is our three minutes. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to move on to our next set of speakers. Let me find them. Oh, actually, we have Lena. Do we have Lena? No. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next person who's Winnie. Hi, everyone. Glad to be here. <laughs> yeah, it's also my first time to participate in the book dash. I was able to work on a chapter. Uh, let me share that. Okay. Uh, I first uh, read through the content of the research data management book and added on a section uh, on preservation. And thereafter, I also, uh, after uh, reading through the content, I thought that maybe we needed also to add on the data creation as uh, one of the important aspects of uh, sector management. Um, I captured a number of the steps uh, that are involved in data creation. And I look forward to have more contributions since I worked alone. So I look forward to having more uh, collaborations uh, to this chapter and uh, the illustrations as well. Uh, thank you. I, of course, it's been a great opportunity uh, to participate in the book dash. As Anne mentioned, I got the interest from the Carpentry uh, Conference, and I hope to continue with the uh, contribution. Uh, so I look forward to you uh, to adding in I request you to help me add in uh, more content, uh, if you can. And if there are any collaborators when, who, are, who are interested, I will be glad to, to work with you as well. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Winnie. So this was our first merge of this book dash. I'm um, going to stop your screen and just let you see all the virtual round of applause. I'm adding the link to the chapter that Winnie just showed. Um, and if you would like to add anything to that, and of course, as Winnie said, please reach out to her for any collaborative work. Thank you so much, Winnie, for working with us throughout the week. Um, it's been a I great pleasure. And maybe also to mention, to, to also to thank uh, the organizers for this great opportunity. This is completely our pleasure to, to witness this. Um, Thank you to all the folks who actually reviewed so quickly. I am really impressed by the speed that, that this chapter emerged. Um, I'm going to move on to the next person. I have to apologize. I didn't turn on the clock. And our next presenter is Saranjit. Yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Saranjit, and uh, I am at this book dash for the second time. Uh, I, I attended the one in May. And I'm so happy to be returning back in November. Uh, let me share my screen. So uh, I have been working on a chapter on hybrid collaboration. Uh, it's a work in progress PR. And uh, right now it has uh, three sub chapters. One is the challenges faced during hybrid collaboration. Uh, the guidelines for hybrid collaboration, and uh, finally, uh, one more chapter on resources. Uh, while working on this chapter, uh, I was uh, discussing with Malvika, and we realized that uh, it would be better to refactor some parts of uh, the remote collaboration chapter because um, there was a lot of overlap with how uh, how to conduct remote events and in general how to co conduct events. So most of the, uh, those chapters, uh, so Malvika uh, very quickly refactored all those uh, content uh, and they are separately available on the uh, guide to collaboration now. Uh, 
and my uh, next task would be to uh, use those materials, uh, link them in the existing hybrid collaboration chapter and uh, make it much more exhaustive. Uh, besides this, uh, while discussing with Malvika, I also realized, like we both realized that it would be better to have a in-person collaboration chapter. So I have opened a separate uh, issue for the in-person collaboration chapter. So if anyone is interested to work on this or contribute to this, they are very welcome to comment on the issue or reach out to me and uh, we can take it forward from there. That is what I have been working on. Thank you so much, Saranjit, um, especially for really helping me think through what the collaboration guide could look like. And also because of you now, it seems like we have actually been advocating for virtual first collaboration. Um, and now we're, we're very excited to see what comes next. Thank you so, so much. Folks, please do reach out to Saranjit if you'd like to contribute. and. Uh, as always, uh, any idea on in-person would be amazing. Great, the David Blackwell room from the Alan Turing Institute is joining or not, we'll see them. We still have a few speakers left on the deck. The next one is actually Anne. Hello, sorry, my internet um, has like just uh, quit there for a second, but I have a little fun data viz experiment that I just got working yesterday um, that I'd love to share with you all that um, is a kind of, uh, over the course of the past, to give you a little bit of a briefer over the course of the past eight, eight months or so, just been trying to learn more about the kind of history of the Turing Way repository. Um, and coming from a data viz background, I was wondering if it'd be possible to kind of visualize the Turing way as it's grown into different chapters and um, different guides and see if there's a way of visualizing that and turning it into a video. However, um, while this that visualization came together, I was wondering, you know, would it be possible to translate a visualization like this into something that can be listened to as well to ensure that it's not just um, like a visual, uh, Visual, like a visualization of the Turing Way as a project, but also um, maybe an auditory experience as well. So if y'all don't mind, I'm going to share my screen here and my audio to show you all a short clip of what the Turing Way repository sounds like. Can everyone see and hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. Great, okay. So I'm gonna also share a link to this in the chat, but there are a couple of different speeds. This one is around two minutes long. Um, and I'll show you a version of what it looks like. Do you have your audio on? Keep it close. This is around 2019, March. And each sound, if it's the same tone, it's one person. So each person, each username and repository has a different sound. I think I just saw Patricia's name come up. We're now in February 2020. And 
And this little part, as you can see it, is the, the guides, we have some project management, the reasoning. All Contributors Bot is very active and has one of them. That was when a new guide was started to write up here to the phone. We're now in October 2021. You can see a lot of different writing happening here. These are all the images used in, um, in the newsletters that we have put online. Another guy, you see it appearing there. We're now in July of this year, all the way into August. And I believe I set it so that it ends around mid October. There it is. That's until October 27th of this year. All right, I'll stop sharing now. I'll send over the link you. if you're exploring. Thank you so much. I don't even know how to react to that. Like that's that's not something I would ever have thought would be a thing. And now I know it and I can't unsee it. Can't wait to hear it again. So please do share the link with everybody. That is massively impressive. Can you share what did you, no, maybe I'll just wait for my question and I go to, just giving some virtual round of applause for Anne for whatever magic she did. That was fantastic. And now our last speaker, Esther. Yay, I get to go after all of that. I'm not even sure how you managed to do that yesterday. I, uh... So this is gonna be a little bit underwhelming. <laughs> uh, but I'm gonna share my screen anyway. Uh, so this week, apart from having very nice discussions with people, I worked a little bit uh, on a section on open peer review in the peer review chapter, which was originally set up by uh, Lena and I think a couple of other people. Sorry if I don't mention your name. Um, but heavily inspired by her work, and I realized that there was not a lot on open peer review and it's quite a contested subject so I wanted to make sense of it and, and just basically writing a little bit about what different types of open peer review we have uh, what the benefits are uh, but also uh, not everyone uh, is pro open peer review so I also wanted to highlight uh, a couple of things in there why there could be some doubts about it uh, and then again also highlighting that there's some issues if you have double anonymous peer review, which is um, basically hampering open science practices a little bit. So there's no real conclusion there from my side, but I just wanted to figure things out a little bit. So please do contribute there uh, if you are more of an expert into open peer review, uh, especially in terms of initiatives. Oh, and I see a typo. <laughs> I'll fix that later. Um, uh, especially if you know of any initiatives supporting open peer review, um, because Alejandro suggested that that should definitely be part of this chapter, and thanks also for his review of this chapter. Um, but I didn't have the time to do that, so if you know of any, please let me know, uh, or just please open up a pull request. Uh, and I also thought we didn't have a lot on code review, because I obviously didn't look hard enough in the Turing way. We obviously already had something on code review, um, but I did manage to write a little bit about uh, guidance on uh, code review, specifically for when code is part of a journal article, which we didn't have yet. And I completely reused everything that Repo Hack is doing in that regard, which is a really awesome initiative to reproduce uh, papers. Uh, and they provide you with some guidelines. And I basically summarize these guidelines here. 
And I also did a little bit on cultural change and I want to end there because I still need a review for this section. And I probably also need some help with that because everything is failing and I'm not sure why. So if, if anyone can help me there, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Esther, always doing really fantastic work on other people's work and extending that to something big, always inspiring. Thank you so much, folks. That's That was the last speaker. And you'll be really happy to hear that Steph emailed me five images just now that I might be able to show you. I was a bit sad that we weren't able to use illustration, but I have to take the responsibility. We did add a lot of slots. so. Poor Steph has to work with a lot of images, but very luckily I have you. So I could share my screen and show it to you before we move on to our question and answer session. So I hope I can find them. Yeah, there are just five images. Uh, I think it's more than zero. <laughs> Let me share my screen. My laptop is a little bit slow. All right, so we have some images. This one is this one is about community managers that uh, Emma, Aaron, and I worked on. Um, we're writing a position paper to make a case for institutes investing on community managers and not just one community manager, but teams of community managers. And uh, this is perhaps the takeaway from that um, is that people are generally happier uh, institute stock. So these are institute and uh, we, when we have people to nurture and uh, build community. This one, I think this one is from Vinnie. I don't know, Vinnie, do you wanna share for 30 seconds what this is? Yeah, this, uh, ah, wow, this looks, this looks uh, beautiful. Yeah, it's it's a, it's about the process the process uh, that is involved in that data creation. Uh, I thought that we could have come up with a pipeline, uh, starting from the capture up to the transform transformation. That looks amazing. That is that that does look amazing, and I have to probably sit down with with it. We have another one. Um, I'm not sure who made this one. Am I using the data responsibly? Do we have someone on the call who made this and want to talk about it? Yeah, that would be me. Oh, Aditi, <laughs> please do. Yeah, it's actually a chapter in progress. Um, I just wanted to create an outline of the chapter today itself. So um, uh, I don't have a chapter yet, but the idea behind this was that um, when you ha are working with social data, you have a lot of data at hand and it's uh, the responsibility of the um, researcher to uh, use it responsibly so as to maintain the research integrity and also protect the privacy of the users involved because these platforms, they act as gatekeepers and even though they give access to this data, um, it's up to the researcher to then use it responsibly as well. So this is a question which I feel that researchers always have in mind, like the ethical consideration and other things while working with this kind of data. Yeah, that's amazing. That looks really great. Thanks so much, Aditi. Now we have another one. Uh, you don't need to speak up, but if this is yours, you do have a chance to explain this to us. I think okay. that's mine and mine oh. and Alden's, isn't it? Yeah. Cool. This was Do the one know. for the um well the chapter that Alden wrote about um uh, giving a talk. So we wanted to have an illustration for for that. So but we were combining also with the training element as well. So yeah, it looks lovely. Cool. And we have a last image following people and processes. Yeah, it might look a little bit like the community manager. Um, it, it has a similar message as in the people are very important behind research. And we, we had already this image with the balance where we go from quantity to quality research outputs. But I felt that there was something missing there about that we should also 
not just value, value the quality of research outputs, but just also value the people who are doing like invisible labor that you don't see in this research output. Uh, so, and it's it's really pretty, so I'm very happy. Awesome. Um, thank you all. And I'll just do a very collective round of applause for everybody. This has been really fantastic. Thank you so much. And I think we can take a few questions, a couple of questions before I hand it to Anne. Actually, why don't I just hand it to Anne and Anne can wrangle our question if her video is working. Good. Okay, probably glitchy. So I'll take some questions. Do we have any questions for anybody who presented today? Yes, happy. So my internet, I think, might be might be quitting. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Um, yeah, your your uh, internet is a bit glitchy. I think. Sorry about that. Um, no worries. Now we hear you properly. But, great. Okay. Um, does anyone have any questions? There are so many awesome new chapters. Uh, chapters, illustrations, ideas being worked on all throughout this week. And if we don't have any, I can get have one maybe to get us started. Okay, cool. Um, Rachel and Mawish, I had a question for you both um, about maybe, would you both be able to talk about how you, um, how you kind of, the process of creating like definitions around data wranglers. Um, Cause I know that over the course of this week, you've talked with people in your team, you talked with each other, and that you also, you're, you yourselves were saying that you had different ideas of what a data wrangler was. So I was wondering how you were able to kind of bring together all of these different things to, to create a kind of shared definition. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. Um, I think Rachel would agree that a lot of the process was actually us talking to each other. So we both spent a lot of time communicating with each other and the people in our team to get an idea of what people's thoughts were on what a data wrangler is. We did do a lot of Googling as well to see what different institutions have to say, <laughs> I must admit. Um, and also talking to uh, Esther, for example, who also helped us to uh, understand like what a data steward is and us trying to communicate with our team like what exactly are the differences between a data steward and a data wrangler, uh, getting their feedback because I think uh, I myself, I still feel quite new. So um, yeah, so I'm still kind of trying to understand exactly what a data wrangler does, right? Uh, so initially, actually, I thought it was like, are we not just data stewards? Um, but yeah, it turned out to be a bit more, um, yeah, a little bit different. So yeah, it's a great experience. <laughs> Anything to add? Um, yeah, I mean, um, I guess a yeah, few few specifics is that as Marish said, like, so um, Marish joined um, this role in the summer and I joined in September. And But we do have some people in our team that have actually been doing this um, job for quite some time. So uh, Lewis in our team has, I think, had kind of a data wrangler role for about 10 years or so. Um, Annie, um, uh, Anne-Marie Milan has, has kind of led lots of teams um, kind of, uh, uh, you know, doing data wrangling, like really, really large uh, consortia of research. So I think that we had many, you know, people. So we, we kind of, and Daniel as well, and our team has, have kind of done this for longer. So we kind of spoke to them, uh, just had like lots of brainstorming and, and documents that we tried to collect. But I think having some, they appreciated having some fresh eyes on it and for, uh, as well, and just trying to compare and contrast with some other roles that we knew. I think that for me, I thought of data wrangling more as a task rather than a job in, <laughs> until I had it in the sense of that it's just a thing you do in a pipeline. So I think once you think of it as more of a job or you know a profession, it's it's um, you have to frame it slightly differently. Um, so I think that yeah, lots of conversations didn't find the googling very helpful, but hopefully once we <laughs> put this into the book, people can find it there. So yeah, hopefully that answers your question, Anne. <laughs> So your chapter will be what comes up in a Google search of what is data wrangling. Yes. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Does anyone else have 
questions that come to mind. I know we zoomed through, you know, everyone's work over the course of the past week, doing huge chunks of work over the course of the past number of months. So if you have any questions to toss their way to, we can also take time for that. I have kind of a general question. I can, all, I, can, I can just keep asking questions. I have so many questions to ask everyone about what they've been working on. Maybe a general one. Um, I, can, I can also tell you- And your internet is- Your internet is glitchy. Um, Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I would also like to know what Anne used for her visualization uh, while she comes back. I think we are really close to ending. This time I kept this call only hour and a half and I, now I know why we had it for two hours in the previous ones. Uh, but I don't wanna take up too much of your time on Friday. I just wanna take a couple of minutes to do a quiet reflection. Um, and that quiet reflection is if you haven't if you haven't participated in the book dash please use the ether, etherpad if you have participated in the book dash please use the feedback document uh, to let us know if you have any question or feedback for the organizers any idea that you want to share where you, where you thought that you want to stay involved and the reason for me to ask is that we we will have a debrief with our book dash committee as well as we will report this uh, so our funders actually continue to fund these kind of events uh, so please do take a couple of minutes um, quietly to write down your thoughts in there So if you're using Etherpad, we're in line number 86 on. If you're um, opening the feedback form, you can log out of your, well, you, you don't need to write down your name. It's all anonymous. Hey Jeff, see ya. We're just taking a couple of minutes to write down um, any question or feedback you have for the organizers, uh, any idea you have that you want to share with us um, in the line number 186 onwards. Hello, can everyone hear me okay? Hello, yes, they are, they are uh, writing down their feedback and then you can close us off. There's a question for you in the chat by Emma.
Okay, I think we have one minute. I just want to respond to one um, for, from the public note. Um, they loved the overview of governance and discussion almost would have expected a separate announcement, not as a part of Book Dash. So just to um, clarify, these events are supposed to be public and we're recording this. It will go on YouTube and it, it will be re-announced in the newsletter. So definitely there is no hiding. There is no way that, that the Turing Bay ever hides the work that people do. But thanks for the feedback. Um, and we'll make sure that we highlight it everywhere possible. Um, yeah, thanks so much, all of you. Keep adding your feedback on the book dash side. And then we're really at the end. So I'll just hand it to Anne uh, to close us off. I think there's really, in many ways, too much to add besides thank you for being here. Um, thank you for joining the community share outs. Thank you for to book dash attendees for being here all throughout the week. Um, book dash is really one of uh, my favorite events uh, that we run, but also it's just a place where all different parts of the community come together. Um, thank you for all your amazing work um, and for being in this space together. Um, I don't know if we want to maybe all come off of uh, audit, like mute, maybe get a little wave so that I could maybe take a nice screenshot. Aside from that, just want to say th thanks. I don't know if there's much to add besides thanks for being here. All of you rock, and we'll see you for part two later today. Maybe, hopefully. Thanks again so much. Have a well deserved Friday and uh, bye, enjoy bye. the next one. Bye. Bye bye. 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 Hey, Jeff, see you. Uh, lovely to see you back home. Hi. All right. All right. We're going to close out, but thank you for joining us and we'll see you around. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye.